I think quality <laughs> has no fear of time. Things of quality have no fear of time. Ooh, I like, I like that. that. Yeah. Did you just make that up? That's a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Courtney, your friends about to show you how to generate wealth. Get educated, do for yourself. Add a couple notches to your belt. Under all is the land. Under all is the land. The real, real estate. Under all is the land. Under all is the land. The real, real real estate. Coming to you live from Acme Real Estate in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to Under All Is the Land, Season One, Episode Three. I'm your host, Courtney Polis, here with my rock star co-stars, Silke Fernald and Dominique Madden. Hello. Hello. Let's get <laughs> started. Let's do it. We have a really fun show today. I mean, we have an incredible special guest. I'm not even going to tell you what he's going to share with us. But before <laughs> we get started on that, we also have a few hot topics that I'd really like to talk about. Whether or not renovation resale can withstand a market shift which is something all of us in LA want to know right now, uh, especially in light of some of the recent bills that have been brought to the California Assembly. We want to talk about all that action. And also we have a special guest who's going to bless us some with some um, magic. Magic, yes. We have a special <laughs> guest who's going to bless us with some magic. Uh, to get started, let's, let's let people know what we're talking about when we say renovation resale. So... We're talking about homes that have been completely renovated from yes. top to bottom and um, flipped. 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 Which Flipping is sort has of become a bad like kind word. of a bad word. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Flipping has become a bad word. So, you know, we don't say it anymore. But I also think there's a distinction between flippers, Flip. straight flippers, people who are really just doing lipstick kind of flips versus renovation resale, which yes. is a heavier, more design. Yes thoughtful, design conscious yes. re renovation. So it, we, Acme, has made our reputation in renovation resale in the past decade. And we've done that by pushing our lipstick flippers toward a more elevated design look, um, which has resulted in record-breaking sales for most of our renovation resale clients. So we have an authority in this space, I think, that a lot of agents don't. We're getting it on the ground. We see what's happening. And I do think that people are getting a little nervous. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, for sure. I mean, well, I think rising interest rates just make people nervous in general. But, you know, in L.A., we're such a strong market that I personally think that we can withstand what's coming this year. I don't know what happens after this year. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure what's happening this year, and especially, I mean, in Los Angeles, right, you have your normal owner-occupied, you know, they've been lived in, someone else could move into them and do whatever it takes to, you know, to, to get them up to wherever they want them to be. But then you also have houses that are so dilapidated that only cash buyers can buy them. And those are where flippers come in or mm -hmm. renovation, renovation resale artists. How um, we like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> which, like Courtney mentioned, are two yeah. very different things. You yeah. have your churn and burn flippers who are usually the ones who are putting less money in and, uh, and you know, usually doing the more paint on a pig, like basic flips, yep. less consideration for the design more so just to kind of turn it over quickly and make the quick income. And then you have the artists, the renovation resale specialists, the designers, the architects who actually care about the houses and their bones, but also need to make money off of it because it's an investment. That's the thing. I'm starting to think with California lawmaking lately that they actually do not want people to make money. Renovation resale allows people to like buy a home of their dreams and essentially finance the renovation. Cause let's face it, a lot of first time home buyers and a lot of buyers in general don't have a couple hundred thousand dollars in capital to buy these houses and do the work themselves. Exactly. And it is work. It is like work. You see people showing up every day, managing their teams, you know, making sure that the plumbing gets done before the electrical and choosing the flooring products and making the, the, the plans and working with the architect. It's like a lot of work. It takes a year sometimes for mm -hmm. people to do it's it. So to think, oh, flippers are paid too much simply mm -hmm. because if you have a good 
renovation resale team, like a good flipper, good designer, and a good ren uh, renovation resale specialist realtor, you're going to set record breaking prices. You're going to yes. make real money. And what is wrong with that? If there I, are buyers willing yeah. to buy, I don't understand why anyone would have a problem with flippers making their money. You know, no. I think there are misconceptions about how much money flippers actually make because a lot of people aren't aware of what the real costs are involved in renovating yep. homes. Right. You know, I mean, when it comes to actual construction costs, those have skyrocketed, partially due to uh, demand, lack of supply of actual, you know. Or like supply uh, chain issues. Supply chain issues, but actual, like lack of contractors and handymen and mm -hmm. electricians and plumbers. Right. And, you know, that piece plays a big piece, but also just like the act, like the costs related to replacing a roof, you know, from material to labor or replacing plumbing systems or, you know, just doing major overhauls, which a lot of these houses that are being picked up by flippers, they need, they, they need, need all they need it. the full gamut and they need it all. A, a typical owner occupier can't usually absorb all those costs. Right. And so that's why flippers and renovation resale artists are necessary. Right. Because otherwise, who's buying those houses? Well, here's, right. another, here's another thing. Here's another thing. So for the people who have those houses to sell, they're making more money now. So those are like trusts and probates and whatever. Those people who are selling houses that are majorly dilapidated, they're making they more money so now than money. they ever were making before. Now, what you do with that money when you make it is a different story. It's like, I'm a huge fan of putting like making it inclusive so that the people who are making the money on these trust sales might want to take that money and reinvest it or maybe partner with a flipper on the on the flip so that they're making money off the profit mm -hmm. but but no matter what the option if you dissuade people from doing renovation resale the the leftover inventory is going to be uninhabitable and it's going to be deteriorated, dilapidated housing, which does nobody any service. Yeah. If it's not actual, and, oh, I was going to say this one other thing before renovation artists really started getting into this mix. Um, a lot of flips were cheap as heck. So people were still paying a high price, but they we're getting laminate floors and crappy finishes yeah. and all the character ripped out and you know granite countertops and whatever and that's the reason roof, right that's why this emerged yeah. that's why renovation resale actually came up because people are willing to pay for good design that's what i was going to try to say like buyers know the difference now if you walk into a house and you just know you can smell it like if you have good yeah. finishes and tasteful design and um, you don't cut corners, you don't go with cheap laminate or, or whatever, uh, Ikea kitchens, um, it's a difference. You know? yep. People pay for good design. I, think st I still think you have to go the extra mile as the flipper and put the extra effort into your house to bring it up to a certain standard and then you will get more money for it. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. Think, I think that's definitely true. But I also think the most successful renovation artists and the ones who are going to be able to withstand a market shift or correction are the people who make smart buying choices, which is another thing that a lot of, um, if you're just going with like a random run-of-the-mill realtor, you might not know how to calculate how much this market value is going to be at the end of it, given the circumstances, or you might end up buying a property that's on a fault line, or you might end up doing something stupid, you know, that ends up affecting the future market value or buying close to a freeway or whatever the hurdle may be. Or not yeah. knowing where to put the money that you're putting in. You know, I see yeah. a lot of people make mistakes with where they invest the money in the flip. And if you're, you know, if you're only doing surface level finishes, you know, even if they look great, if underneath it, it's a shit show, then people will for sure find that when they're inspecting because, you know, inspectors definitely do their due diligence. Um, but, you know, but also then it's left with buyers who are thinking that they're going to have to take on those costs, which, again, most people can't take on, which mm -hmm. is why flipping is even a thing. Because if people could, with you know, absorb a $50,000 foundation replacement or a $30,000 roof replacement, 
I mean, well, that would just want to be very impressive. But, <laughs> but two, you know, most of these properties that then become flips would probably be going for higher prices than what they are if more people were able to do them. Unfortunately, they're not. And that's why it looks like it was sold for such a value, right? Like whenever people see a property and it's sold for 400000 and then, you know, the owner does a renovation and sells it for 800000 I often hear the question, well, why would I pay? 400,000 more than what they just bought it for four months ago. Right. And I'm because like, they well, probably put $300,000 into that house to <laughs> exactly. make it look what you, to you know, make it look what it looks now and exactly. you pay that money. And talking about 400, I mean, that is, we're now looking at a million yeah. dollars <laughs> for a thousand square foot teardown. Yeah. Right. And yeah. obviously you have to sell it for one seven to make money on it. Right. And yeah. it sounds like, wait, what? 700 difference? Like, how can it be? Well, but I mean, but even, you put so much holding cost, yes. renovation cost, the Sale time cost. it takes, and sales cost. It is a huge operation. So that, that flipper who sells for one seven and bought it for one, they're not making $700,000. No. Right. They're, they're making mean, maybe a hundred thousand for yeah. having all their liability on their shoulders for a year yeah. uh -huh. and the holding costs again and all that. So it's for that a hundred thousand. That's okay. But also if, if I were to take that same buyer and show them the $400,000 fixer or the million dollar fixer, you're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what to do with this. And guess what? You're right. If you feel like you don't know what to do with it, don't do it. Yeah. You yep. know, back in the day, I used to encourage people to always like, you know, as much as they could, do a project. You know, build your equity quickly. T you know, take it on. Like, you know, you've got all these people. We've got all these resources. But guess what? You know, it's a different time now, and it's mm -hmm. so much harder to get through renovating the decision making on the finishes you're going to do finding the people who are going to do it and finding and people well. who are available to do it <laughs> yeah who will yeah. do it well and be reliable and you know even just absorbing the costs that are associated with the hold you right. know that's yeah. something that people don't consider like i can speak for myself I did not expect a project that I am currently almost at the end of to take so long. And, you know, I've had to pay rent while I'm also paying my mortgage, while I'm also paying for contractor fees and, you know, uh, like right. upcharges for different things. It's like, it's a whole thing. It's yeah. a thing. You've got to know that and that's what they're getting paid for. With inflation, your money is more valuable in your pocket right now then it will be mortgaged at even a six or a five percent interest rate over 30 years for the five years that you're going to own this property and you're getting a tax break on the mortgage interest that you're paying so in all ways for a first-time home buyer for sure but for any home buyer really if there's affordable product that's already been renovated and it's within your price point it makes sense to buy a well-designed finished product especially if you intend to live there for just the next five to seven years because that's cash you don't need to come up with totally. right now now there is a a person um, his name is Chris Ward. He's in the 78th district in San Diego, and he put a bill forward to the California state assembly that is essentially a flippers tax. It's called Cal the California housing speculation act assembly bill 1771. This would essentially triple taxes on flippers. It would add an additional 25% tax for flippers. And I'm like, I, this, the, the, even the audacity of, of the idea that this would somehow relieve the housing crisis or something mm -hmm. is ridiculous to me. Mm -hmm. But in addition, why do they keep trying to add more taxes? We have a surplus of taxes in California and we still have crime. We still have homelessness, unbuilt low income housing projects and whatever it is that they promised that they were going to do. The money doesn't go anywhere it doesn't go back to people so what what's the point of taxing flippers what, it's what? The, the wrong place to go in my opinion yeah. where yeah. would you go i would go to the mega rich <laughs> let's go to the mega rich like seriously let's go to the people yeah, that I, have you know, more money than cents where it really doesn't matter. What I want to go is accountability. Okay. I want to see how you spent last step. year's tax increase. How did you spend last year's tax increase? Let's yep. see the numbers. Who yep. did you hire? Did they finish the job? Like, where's the accountability when they do these tax right. increases? Because now our capital gains are going to go up too. It's pretty crazy here. You know, definitely we need to start tracking the money better as taxpayers because I have a hard time just looking at LA streets and believing that my tax funds are paying for 
it to look like it does right now, you know? I mean, but where, what's the purpose of this flipper tax? I think that's yeah, a good conversation. A... What, what are they trying to do with that? Because uh, what, in my opinion, what it does isn't help solve the housing crisis, mm -hmm. which is what they're saying it will do, right? right? Oh, more supply because there will be less flippers in the market. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It, it disempowers the mom and pop flippers, the little guys who can't afford a 25% tax hike. And it incentivizes the people who can afford that. It incentivizes the big companies who are out there doing the churn and burn shitty flips that leave owners paying more because guess what? Those people aren't replacing the roof unless it really needs to be replaced. Right. You, you know, be the uh, one and replacing. when I say that, I mean, yeah. you can clearly see a hole in it, you know, like those people aren't doing the in-depth thoughtful flips right. that you want to see and that you want people to get because then they're not having to pay those out of pocket costs for all the things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. those are the people that it enables. It disables the people who have the smaller budgets or don't have like the, you know, the hedge fund behind them. And those are the people who we really need to be incentivizing to do more mm -hmm. projects. Yeah, I totally agree. And I don't think that discouraging flippers is going to create a new stock of inhabitable real estate. If you've ever walked through the properties that our flippers buy, these places have mold. They have, you know, that burned they're, down. They're, some of them are burned down. They're horrible. <laughs> yeah. Like uninhabitable. You cannot, they're not yeah. like, you know, grandma houses that no. maybe just replace the floors you think. No, one of my there first blog no posts I ever wrote was called The Myth of the Cosmetic <laughs> Fixer. It doesn't really yes, exist. Yeah. But, you know. But no, he, those are next level bad. Like, those are the houses that are, like. Yeah, I mean, the houses that flippers beyond buy repair. Are, are, are. They're beyond repair. They're so bad that no yeah. buyers are going to even be able to finance them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who is this extra inventory going to go to? It would be my question. Yeah. Who do you think is going to buy it? So if it does what you say and it's going to be corporations, then we're going to see more of what we're seeing in Central Florida right now, which is corporations buying up whole developments of single family homes and turning them into rentals. So talk about taking yep. inventory. Maybe our friend Chris Ward from the 78th district <laughs> should uh, consider <laughs> making his play at stopping corporations from buying up inventory and How turning them into we rentals. We should invite him How and ask him that? what he was yeah. thinking. Yeah. We should invite we him. Should invite him. him. I'd love yeah. to have a couple <laughs> moments with him. What? But I also think what would happen is the quality of the flip is going to go down Agreed. because the cost yes. of it's going to go up. Okay. So if the quality goes down, then who does it serve? Is it serving the home buyer? It's not serving the home buyer. Nope. They're going to buy, like Neek said, a house that doesn't have a new roof. It's a shittier product, no design. It's just, it all, all around is such a bad idea. Um, I have some horror story flipper stories, but you know, when bad, when, when it goes bad, it can go really quite bad. In fact, we all know somebody who bought a property where the real estate agent, um, you know, didn't really advise them properly on the inspections to get, they were out of state buyer when they bought and it like everything went wrong. Like all the representations that the corporate flipper made were inaccurate and it ended up in a lawsuit. It was a huge company, huge too. company, huge company, huge who, company who crosses state lines and cro does an abundance of business. And right. every single house you see by this large company you can tell is pain on a pig. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Yep. So they don't, they're not learning their lessons by the lawsuits they're losing. Right. Because <laughs> I, I guess it's not enough to make them care. No, exactly. Right. It's probably not enough to make them care. But does it matter to, to our client and friend? Yes. Yeah, and it, it matters. matters to the community and the product, the people, and and that's what gives the flippers the bad reputation. That's, it. Mm -hmm. that's why we say it, renovation resale. That's why exactly. Because there is a difference. That's right. Um. So, you know, I think that the, at the end of the day, when I look at the way that uh, the perception of the market is too, I've been asked on a couple of, by a couple of reporters this week, what I think is actually happening. And I have to keep saying real estate is local. Like, I don't know what's going on in the rest of the country, maybe except Orlando, but I can tell you right now, we still have very viable buyers who are looking at property and ready and willing and able to make the kind of plays they need to make to, to buy that property. So this idea of stirring a, 
a frenzy. Are we going to have another crash? Is it a bubble? You know, this is a supply demand bubble, if anything, and we still have buyers ready to buy. And so I actually think regardless of the interest rate slight uh, uptick, you know, it's still still a healthy market here. We still have less homes than buyers. Right. And as long as that's not in balance, we will always have a seller's market. Right. How many offers did your last listing get? 18. 18 offers. And it's in escrow for a lot more than it was listed at, right? A lot, a lot. Yeah, so it's like... And, and not only one person went to that space. We had several. So right. this is just what it is. There's Same a lot of us. money in the market. There's a lot of buyers doing Keep, the thing they need to do to win a house. Yeah. yeah. And the reality is that even as rates rise, they're still historically low. Thank you. So you're still, yes. you're still capturing great interest rates. It's just that if you would have bought two months ago, it would have been even better. But the reality, too, is that today's price isn't tomorrow's price, and tomorrow's price isn't next year's price. So even if the rates do go back down, if you wait another year and wait for those rates to go back down, you're paying next yeah. year's price. So you're still paying more. Right. You know, it's it really is a supply issue. And uh, just to touch on that flipper tags again, that will, I think, create an even bigger supply issue because what it does is – it taxes them an additional 25% for three years. And then from the three-year point, that amount starts to go down, but you're still getting extra taxes. So what I think that will do is probably encourage flippers to hold their properties longer to avoid the taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then what does that create? Less inventory. Less inventory. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. Wow, this guy really did not think this through. I'm really hoping that our uh, representatives, I know Carr is very much doing advocacy against this um, bill. But, you know, I'm hoping that our lawmakers are with it because this guy just seems like completely out of touch. Dude, you can call me if you want to explain your position, but I'm pretty sure that you're so far off the mark that it will yes. not pass. If it does, I don't know. Maybe we can flip it's going to change. Can we flip it? Can we <laughs> flip position? that? Can we flip that? <laughs> yeah. Can we flip um, your mind? Well, I'm all hot and worked up, but I okay. think it's a good time to bring on our special <laughs> okay. guest to get our light. energy. Let's right. do yes. it. Yes. We need so, to you know, clear real the air. Very stressful <laughs> and makes us feel very emotional. So we are bringing on one of our favorite Acme agents, Ramichael Monsad, who's going to share with us his approach to creating peace and harmony harmonious balance throughout his career as a real estate agent using crystals. Um. <laughs> Welcome, Michael. Oh my God. Thanks. Welcome. Well, this cool. is the podcast. I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> we are honored to have you here. So, Michael, you know, you've been, uh, I think for all of us at Acme, you've been such an incredible force for... Um, love, peace, and balance. Mm-hmm. And uh, we know you have some tricks up your sleeve. So we're excited to see what you are bringing us today, what you're sharing with us. So, you know, take the floor. It's yours. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for having me. I did bring some of my buddies with me. Um, I got some selenite, some amethyst, and tourmaline to uh, kick off uh, the uh, energy um situation that we're having today okay so so okay so before you get started like do you use these crystals in your everyday real estate practice or is this like a home thing well home is work and work is home you know me i'm a workaholic so this type of um support is so necessary i believe to be so necessary to have at home Um, they all have their special places i put the selenite in the entryway it's a good diffuser to kind of filter out the bad or negative energies that are coming with you home. And immediately once you enter the doorway, it's like dispelled. Mm. Um, Amethyst is another great one to have um, in an entryway as well. Um, A good uh, balancer, diffuser as well. Um, I'm really big on the the heavy, kind of almost simplified crystals that actually do a lot for you. Then I have this tourmaline. I actually keep this in my restroom. I don't know if that's exactly where it should be. Okay. But um, it's right um, by the faucet. So it's doing this mirrored thing with the mirror itself. So I feel mm. like maybe I'm doubling up on the... It's um, very meta, Michael. Super meta. So these are the ones that are in my space. And then okay. I have um, some desert sage here, which is a cleanser. So anytime you feel like your crystals are like 
doing the most and they're kind of like stuff, you know, stuff you would like negative energy or just energy in general, you use the desert stage to um, cleanse, cleanse your crystals. Cleanse your crystals. Okay, so let me get this straight. <clears throat> cleanse your crystals, yeah. Wow. You what? are outside. You're picking up all these negative vibrations. You walk into your house. These crystals absorb the negative stuff that you're bringing in. So they you should. feel great. But then at a certain point, the crystals are like, now I'm negative too, and you have to cleanse them. Um, so that's maybe, that might involve therapy or some other type <laughs> like of talking like, to the crystal. <laughs> situation. Are you okay? But like no, because what you do is set the intention. So anytime you're in a, a place of, 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 um, you know, where you need some support and you're like reaching out to, you know, these, these objects, always set an intention before you start speaking out what you're asking for or seeking, um, some type of guidance. So, um, once I enter the home, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been a long day, you know, please, uh, diffuse this, please clear any energies that I may have brought with me. Um, sometimes you remember, sometimes you don't, but then I think it becomes, it becomes a very subconscious uh, process. So these are the That's ones awesome. you have at home. Do you take other crystals with you out in the field? Well, so I don't have any sleeves, Funny but... <laughs> so I always carry these uh, little bad boys with me. Um, some uh, Himalayan, uh, or no, Tibetan uh, quartz. Okay. Oh, wow. This is like the ultimate, like... Um, uh, I guess it's kind Does of like a Does it protect you from evil or something? It's a Brita. It should, yeah. It should. You know, when you no guarantees, of course, if this is going to take away any energy. It'd be negative energy, but nice. essentially it, it should. Okay. Um, and then I carry my own uh, tourmaline mm -hmm. to avoid negative energy. Also, this helps me with when I'm traveling to be focused, and especially if I'm because we're driving so much, you know, and we're mm -hmm. dealing with so much attitude oh and anger and all that it's type true. of... Um, this is the same as this. Energy. This is the same. I would put this in my car. Yeah. <laughs> the big guy. It helps with driving. I actually carry this with me sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Really? I believe yeah. it. But I'll wrap it up and I'll like, you know, <laughs> treat it like my little baby because yeah. it's it's a good one to have. It is beautiful. Remind um, me of the, the name of this one. Selenite. Selenite. Isn't selenite. Also selenite. supposed to be... S-E-L-I-N-I-T-E. -E. Isn't selenite. it supposed to be the pathway to like the angel world? Yes. Because my, yes. my daughter gave me one of these. I have a tower. It's a little bit tall and has a light inside. And it's so pretty. I have oh, it in my really? bedroom. Uh -huh. But I don't know. It's like some. I was told it's something like with angels and mm. uh -huh. a different realm. Well, you know what? If you don't have any sage or you're, you know, you can't really inhale that type of um, smoke, mm. use the selenite to clear all of your crystals. Because this is like the. It's It acts just as the, 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 sage, the, the does. sage does. Mm -hmm. It's a cleanser. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And what do you do yeah. with it to have it cleanse them? Like, well, do you set that? Uh-huh. You set your intention, and then you uh, typically, um, you would have this as a wand. So you take the wand, and you go like this over your crown. Okay. And mm. that's how it does its magic. No, I mean, I that's drop so it cool. on my head, yes. clumsy as I am. You do the sage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do the sage. <laughs> totally. So, you know, it's to each their own. Um, but for me, it's really... Um, been a blessing um these little you know yeah tell us about the other ones oh orange calcite so this is really great for um the um the, for the body coming from your core it's it helps with the vibration to keep you constantly vibrated and Ooh, focused i like that to um uh to uh successfully make money this is mm. a really good one to have. Mm. Is this so that's trick? been working for you, Remichael. It's been working um, <laughs> on some days for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think on most days. Most days, yeah. 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 <laughs> but like, I really abide by the, like, they're so s simple. And you can get very kind of jaded, like, oh my god, I got my crystals, you know? Like, it's going to like help me like clear the room. And, but, you know, it's, it's more than that. It's a very, um, uh, it's like it, it almost acts as like a reminder and, and creates a routine for yourself to mm -hmm. always believe in yourself don't give up um, especially in our industry we deal with so many different attitudes and, and personalities and homes every time we're entering a home it's like you're colliding your energy with whatever was there before you mm -hmm. so I always make sure to say thank you home before I leave oh, that's so cute. and I love then that. I rub my uh, Tibetan quartz I love that. Yeah. And you know, you're such a powerhouse here and you always keep like this super cool, calm energy to you. So 
interesting. I think they're working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually brought some for you guys. Maybe they oh, oh, start oh. working too. Oh, so you know when you go uh, stone or crystal shopping, you know, right? You always kind of look at the bunch and whatever you gravitate towards. That's the, the chosen one for you. Okay. So um, there's three bags here. So I'm curious to see like which ones you choose from. Okay. Ooh, yeah. I mean, we just naturally okay. pick the one that's closest to us. <laughs> I was feeling this one. I, I can feel it. Yeah, open it. That was for you. Yeah. That is okay. So, that is okay. so sweet of you. I also love this bag. That made my day. Oh, so these are all from... Oh, there's more. This is all oh, from uh, Spellbound, Spellbound Sky. Sky. Oh, that's, Where is, is that? that the... Off of Santa Monica oh, Boulevard okay. and just about like around Virgil. <gasps> is this Selenite? So I, bought, I got you Selenite wands. Oh my gosh. I, oh I wanted a Selenite. Gosh. I got yeah. the orange calcite. I love this. Uh -huh, so this the orange is like... Calcite. Oh, the smoky quartz. Oh, the I smoky love this. Quartz. This I is for that. grounding, so, uh, manifestation, yeah. transmutation mm -hmm. of negative energies. Yeah, so love what that. I brought you is like, it kind of starts, oh. orange calcite oh. starts from the core and it vibrates up, and then the uh, smoky quartz is to um, um, clear the uh, negative energies within your crown. Thank you so much. Wow, yeah. this so is so pretty. cool. Yeah. Thank you so you much. You're so welcome. I hope this oh, um, helps during your, uh, you know, Here's showings. Here's one for my car. Uh -huh. Right there. Yeah. And that's Beautiful. So pretty. Wow. wow. Wait, do you, oh, own, so do you own these crystals? So much. I have some crystals. Yeah. Um, I have one that's like this. Uh -huh. um, I have rose quartz and um, a few other ones that are on my console, my living room. Uh -huh. um, and I have a lot of sage. Cool. And I learned from you one time or another to do it clockwise. Oh, yeah, so totally. I've been doing oh. that. Uh -huh. um, but you know what? It's true. It's like in this industry, first of all, I hear people talk about mental health for real estate agents, and I'm typically like, wah, wah, like, give me a break already. Like, we honestly have a, it's not a cushy job, it's a hard job, but as far as it being mental, it's in our control, I think, too. Oh, totally. Like, it's all about understanding what's coming at us and how we deal with it. So, but all that to say, there are some times when you just feel like breaking down, like something really breaks your heart or, you know, some tenants get evicted that you're just like, that wasn't fair or, you know, or you feel like, like somebody's being a super greedy and, and that sucks or, you know, something that really affects your like heart, oh, totally. you know? And so in those moments, I can see these being really useful in like recentering and like balancing so that you can continue giving the best service to the next person you have to interact with totally. as opposed to carrying that energy with you throughout yeah, the day. Yeah. That's the hardest thing is that when somebody does something messed up or I get a messed up text message, like I got one a couple of days ago that I just like made my jaw drop onto the floor, you know? And I'm mm -hmm. like, really? There are people like in the world doing the things that are suggested in this thing. Just like, I just couldn't even believe it. But I carried that energy of disappointment yeah. about it with me for like hours and hours and hours. Totally. And that can affect your productivity. So That's I so think true. having so this true. awareness and allowing yourself to rely on this other thing is, right. could, will be very useful for me, I think. Yeah, totally. totally. And, if, and if nothing else, it's beautiful. It feels great. Yeah. They look pretty. It's just, it's... Just yeah. makes work it feel of art. Good. It's a good statement piece yeah. on a coffee table, on a you know kitchen counter. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's serving multiple um, purposes. And you know when you're going crystal hunting, there's so many ch to choose from. And just you know take your time. Um, one of the gals at Spellbound Sky, her name's Ingrid. Um, when I go in there, she says, "Make sure you take the kiss me approach. Um, What's keep it. That? It's the keep it, um, keep it simple, stupid." So oh. like, just like, don't just don't think so hard. Don't think so hard about it. You know, have intention when you're, you know, choosing your crystals, but you know, just just don't go crazy. Just you know, really just focus on like a couple, handful, because the intentions like they need to be like super, um, you know, uh, like clear, simple. like authentic yeah. and authentic, clear. Authentic, exactly. Authentic. Yeah. You know, I think more people could use crystals and just energy healing in general. Yeah. You know, if, if totally. more people did focus on that in the world, it would be a better place. Exactly. In <laughs> the world. So true. Sure. Yeah, that's my know. Miss America. You know. that's Dominique's got crunchy. Crystals. <laughs> crystals for the world. Oh, I voted um, for you. You can find Ramichael on Instagram at... Ramichael underscore 
at underscore acme underscore re. Maybe you need to get a little There's bit a of a shorter. <laughs> It's a lot of underscores. I just wanted you to know where I'm from. Hey. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, joining you. us really today. Appreciate really appreciate So, so appreciative yeah. of your gifts. Cool. Amazing. Thank Thanks. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so thank you awesome. He's crystal. Yes. I love it. I mean, Ramichael. Amazing. He's so special. Sweetest. He's so special and what a generous gift. Yeah, seriously. Um, yep. I needed that. Yeah. It's so it really good. really made my day. He's the best. To wrap up, what we came here to figure out is can renovation resale withstand a market shift? And I'd love to hear your thoughts. So I think it can. Yeah. But I do believe that you still have to put the extra mile in. I think good design pays off. Buyers know the difference and they will pay extra money to have something special that they feel like not everybody else has or anybody else has for that matter. Just put that little special angle on your property and make it something mm -hmm. that is just different. Right. And I think you'll always make money on that. I believe that. I hear that. Nick, what do you think? I think renovation resale is only going to improve with the market shifting because I think as other things become less affordable, it's going to mean that people are going to have to buy houses that are already done. Mm. And I think that, you know, especially if people are thoughtful about what they're doing, then they'll be able to withstand the shift as well. Because, you know, one thing that we're seeing is that buyers are being more discerning about what they're offering on, mm -hmm. but they're going crazy for things that they love, you know? But because their monthly costs are higher than they even anticipated a couple months ago at the same price, right? They, they their expectations have changed, and you know you really need to just put some more thought into what you're doing to make sure that you're capturing as many buyers when you go onto the market as you can, and that goes for renovation resale and regular owners. You know there are properties that are sitting because they either mislisted or they didn't prep for sale, or they have hurdles that people see as unjumpable or don't want to pay for. Mm -hmm. you know, And that's what I think will feel the shift, the houses that aren't being considerate about what they're doing. Okay, but I will, I, think say, I, I will say, what I think that renovation resale cannot withstand is a tax increase, Chris Ward. <laughs> <laughs> I think quality has no fear of time. Things of quality have no fear of time. Ooh, I like, I like that. that. Yeah. Did you just make that up? That's a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> that my lovely husband owns. Oh my and god! He wears it with pride, and I love it because it's like, yes, you're so I love that. Right. <laughs> Things of quality have no fear of yeah, time. Yeah, no, that, that. So, and that goes into renovation resale. Put a product on the market that is good, and you'll be fine. Right. Yeah. And just to add one more color to this, I think what Neek said is right. You know, people are going crazy for what they love, but they're not going to tolerate this like middle of the road baloney anymore. So the crappy flipper should just get out of the game. But yeah. also yeah. I want to just say 10 years ago, the spreads that our flippers needed were much smaller. They were making smaller demands. I think construction costs were lower. Maybe design expectations were a little lower, but also the sellers were a little less greedy. So, you know, maybe if the market shifts in such a way, um, you know, people can expect a little bit less than what they're getting right now, but it's still worth it and still a really good return on your investment. So I think we just need to adjust the, to the idea that maybe you're not going to have as big a spread on every single, um, on every single deal. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm saying greedy because I have felt that um, you know that's the honest truth of it not I mean, everybody's it's a, yeah, it's like that money, it's an outcome but some people yeah. are yeah it's a money it's, it's all about the money right all about the bottom line but there are some flippers who really love creating right. product that is beautiful that's what and i'm they saying don't care as much as the numbers guy who's just like this is not a good deal it doesn't pencil next let's right. move on right and then we have the people that have like two or three or four homes at a time that's the smaller scale flipper and they're just like, they put their heart, heart into, into it. it. Right. That's what I'm saying. I, I think that's, I think that's it too. It's like more of those, please. 
Yes, more please. Of those, please, because that that brings it brings a better product to the market and also makes um, the resale experience so much better. You know, when you have buyers who truly appreciate the finished product mm -hmm. and sellers who you know worked really really hard on it to to bring something to market that's so beautiful, it it just makes it feel like ah, this is why I do what I do you know right. and then yeah. we make the magic happen yes and the market's always good for somebody mm -hmm. and p.s list price is just a marketing tool so the fact that things are going seven hundred thousand over is partially because they've been underpriced but that's strategic and that's what we have to do in our market so you know well this is where the good agent comes in right and i feel like that's a whole nother podcast on its own <laughs> <laughs> the good agent <laughs> exactly yeah i mean there are agents who leave money on the table i recently saw a yes. deal around the corner from us here where i was like what they didn't <laughs> that it was like a low price sale i'm like really i mean i think they undersold it yeah. so i think you know you have to choose your agents carefully um, people who understand renovation resale are few and far between. And so we're lucky to have had a decade of experience creating, uh, you know, appraisal packages and, and understanding how to resell the properties in a specific way and be able to give our clients coaching in a way that we know yeah. is uniquely ours. And we're know? setting record numbers. So that's proof in the pudding. Yeah. So that's proof in the pudding. So I think our flippers are going to be fine. I mean, renovation resale artist. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. We are Courtney Polis, Silga Fernald, and Dominique Madden. Under all is the land, and we will see you next time. Coming to you live from Acme Real Estate in Los Angeles, California. It's Under All is the Land with your host, Courtney Polis, Silka Fernald, and Dominique Madden.